What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And some people on this planet are so vile and dark that I truly have no words to describe how I really feel about them, especially not words that I can say on here while watching my language. Those people have a special place in hell with their names reserved. And those people include anyone that uses war as a means to profit and enrich themselves. You see, these people could give a rat's ass about the Afghan people, a people that I spent much time living side by side with, a people that I love and consider to be good friends with until this day. You think the right-wing media troll cares about Afghanistan, the Afghan people, and what happens to them? Desperate Afghans clinging onto aircraft, falling to their deaths. Innocent families standing waist deep in bloody sewer water, passports and visa applications in hand, pleading to be rescued. And who could forget the scene at Dover Air Force Base as flag-draped coffins carrying the bodies of 13 American service members were solemnly transferred to their final resting places as Biden impatiently checked his watch every few minutes. But soon the establishment media was eager to move on, just like their bosses in the Biden regime wanted them to, to help Biden save face and try to rescue his floundering domestic agenda. By October, you could barely find a mention of Afghanistan, the thousands of Americans and our allies trapped behind enemy lines. America's longest war is over. Three presidents in a row vowed to bring our troops home, but it was President Biden who stuck to his campaign promises he made to the American people and brought our troops home to the dismay of Halliburton, Lockheed Martin, etc. And these these very powerful forces are hell bent on tearing down President Biden and for good reason. You see, these deranged, dark, evil conglomerates have sucked our country dry. Where do you think the trillions of dollars goes when we're at war? It sure doesn't go to the warriors that are fighting those battles. The average soldier takes home less than $40,000 a year. I'm not going to sugarcoat what goes on in Afghanistan, and it's not always pretty, but this is crap. And if people would use some common sense, they would clearly come to the same conclusion. Biden has created in Afghanistan a humanitarian crisis of vast proportions. If you Google the word hypocrite, a picture of Nikki Haley should pop up. This is a woman that will take any story, no matter what the subject is, and use it to try to smear President Biden. Because China gets that Biden's scared of them. I mean, instead, he should have acknowledged the truth. And what does it say to our friends when we're so scared of their enemies that we can't even have their backs on that? What he should have done was acknowledge the truth, that Taiwan is a democratic society, that they are different than communist China, that they do have freedom of expression while China is becoming more of a communist um, state. So I, I think it's so embarrassing that this happened. And I don't care whether it's a State Department official or the White House, this is a plague that has happened year over year with bureaucracy and what's happening and the fact that we should be able to tell the truth about our friends and our enemies. And the fact that we're not puts us more in danger. Nikki Haley was the ambassador to the United Nations under Donald Trump. And did anyone ever hear Nikki go after China or Russia for their human rights violations while she was a UN ambassador? What is laughable is Nikki thinks that she needs to run her mouth 24 seven on Fox Propaganda Network and other right wing media outlets in order to somehow get into good graces with Trump's base. She's willing to do or say anything to get on the good side. And the reason why is because she plans a run for the presidency, an office that I pray to God she never sees. Nikki Haley's solution to any foreign conflict is to bomb them. And is that what America wants, needs, or sees in our future? As Biden continues to be asleep at the wheel, you can tell it's completely over his head. Kamala is absolutely absent. And we've got a Congress that doesn't get that the more you spend, the higher inflation goes, and that the deficit is only becoming more and more of a national security threat because that's exactly what China wants. When she criticizes President Biden for being soft on communist China, does she ever give any examples why? No, she doesn't because he's not soft on China. She just blows smoke with no factual evidence to back up anything she has to say. Do you guys know what a slap in the face it is to the Chinese government that our country has decided to diplomatically boycott the Olympic Games? The United States diplomatic absence at that Games will have a long lasting effect on how the world views China. The games have not even happened yet, and already that's all everyone is talking about. And many of our allies, including New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom, have chose to follow America. And the list keeps growing, led, of course, by President Biden and the United States. Ever since President Biden has been sworn into office, Nikki Haley can't stop talking about the oppression of the Chinese government on the Uyghurs Muslim population, including forced abortions, sterilizations, forced birth control, rape, including gang rape, forced labor torture, beatings, brainwashing sessions, and many other unspeakable acts. 
for the record, I agree with her on this, but she did not open her mouth about any of this when she was a United States ambassador. And do you think that wasn't happening back then? Nikki Haley is an opportunist and a shameless one at that.